Let's move on to the balance sheet. Another important issue for any business is its current financial position. The financial position addresses questions like, what does the business own? What does it owe? And um, accounting provides answers to these questions in a financial statement called the balance sheet. So a balance sheet reports a company's assets, liabilities, and equity. An asset is a resource of a business that's reported on the balance sheet. So more formally, an asset is an economic resource that is objectively measurable, very important, and that resource results from a prior transaction, and that resource will also provide future economic benefit. So some key requirements of an asset. Assets are recorded and reported at the cost paid to acquire them according to the cost principle. So not what they're worth today, but the cost when we acquired them. Moving on, a liability is an obligation of a business. More formally, a liability is an obligation of a business that results from a past transaction and will require the sacrifice of economic resources at some future date. Next, equity is the difference between a company's assets and liabilities and represents the share of assets that are claimed by the company's owners or shareholders. Balance sheets show two different types of equity, actually. One is contributed capital that is generated by investor contributions. So contributed capital is defined as the resources that investors contribute to a business in exchange for ownership interest. The second type of equity is generated through profitable operations. So profits that are retained in the business are called retained earnings. In contrast, profits that are distributed to the owners are known as dividends. So the basic structure of the balance sheet is going to be very, very important to us. We call this the accounting equation. Some folks call it the accounting identity. And so that equation or identity is assets are equal to liabilities plus equity. So you can think about it in terms of the balance sheet. The left-hand side has to equal the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we have assets. On the right-hand side, we have liabilities plus equity. So these are reported at a given date or time. So just as we had with the income statement, let's look at an example on the balance sheet. Same company as before, Law & Service, but here's their balance sheet as of June 30th. We have assets, which for this company include cash, accounts receivable, and supplies, and those total $234. Then we have liabilities, which are just the notes payable. And then finally, our equity, those two sources, contributed capital and retained earnings. So altogether, the equity is $134, and the equity plus the liabilities are equal to the assets. So let's move on and go ahead and talk about the statement of retained earnings. So this is our third statement. The statement of retained earnings shows the change in a company's retained earnings over a specific period of time, because owners of a business are usually interested in how their equity is growing as a result of profitable operations. They're also interested in how that equity is distributed in the form of dividends. Remember we said that dividends are the way that we distribute earnings back to the shareholders. So all of this information is reported on the statement of retained earnings. So the basic structure of that statement um, it starts with the beginning balance of retained earnings and then adds any net income or, or subtracts any loss. Then it's going to subtract the dividends for the period and that will take us to the ending retained earnings for the period. Another example, still with lawn service. Um, here's their statement of retained earnings. We've got their company name, the statement name, uh, the time reference. So again, for the month ending June 30th, and since the business started with no retained earnings, but generated net income of $84 that we saw in the income statement, 
didn't distribute any profit in the form of dividends, the retained earnings increase from $0 to $84. So now let's talk about how these three statements that we've covered so far fit together. In addition to showing the change in retained earnings, the statement of retained earnings links the income statement and the balance sheet. The statement of retained earnings provides this link by including net income in the calculation of retained earnings. And that's then reported on the balance sheet, retained earnings that is. So this means that when preparing financial statements for any business, the income statement has to be prepared first in order to get that net income amount. And then we follow that with the statement of retained earnings and then the balance sheet.